It's, it's a wealth redistribution program system that has been going on for a hundred years. It just got more accelerated in the last, you know, ten years or so. So we all got, we all kind of took up, took notice. We went, whoa, what the hell is going on? Now they're just giving themselves trillions of dollars. They're just stealing trillions of dollars, just like out in broad daylight, and they're getting away with it. And now we're upset because now we're starting to notice it. It's been going on for a hundred years. Hell no! That's it! Alright? I don't think it can go on much longer because they bankrupted the country. They've driven us all to the point of rebellion. And that's why we're here. The first ever General Accounting uh, uh, Office audit the Federal Reserve was carried out in the past few months due to the Ron Paul Allen Grayson amendment to the Dodd-Frank bill, which passed last year. I just want to make a note that uh, back in 2008 when the Anti-Federal Reserve movement started, uh, we jumped all over this. There was a bill to audit the Federal Reserve Bank. And we got 162,000 signatures to, to Congress people all over the world and about 78% of Congress signed on to this bill to audit the Federal Reserve Act as a, as a result of, of getting 162,000 petition signatures, getting tens of thousands of people down to their Congress people's offices, and we had an effect. We scared the crap out of those Congress critters, and they, and they, and they passed the audit to Federal Reserve. Jim DeMint, Republican Senator Bernie Sanders, Independent sa s Senator, and uh, also Ralph Nader, everyone knows Ralph Nader, all participated, led the charge for a Federal Reserve audit in the, sen in the Senate, which was watered down uh, the original language of the House bill so that a complete audit would not be carried out. Nonetheless, there was, a, there was an audit. $16 trillion have been secretly given out to U.S. banks and corporations and foreign banks everywhere from France to Scotland. From the period between December 2007 and June 2010, the Federal Reserve secretly bailed out many of the world's banks, corporations, and governments. To place $16 trillion into perspective, remember that the GDP of the United States is only $14.12 trillion. That means it's more by a couple of trillion dollars than the entire value of every good product and service uh, generated in the entire United States economy for a single year was given to the banks. Is that a heist? Huh? Is that theft? Yeah. Okay. The national debt of the United States government spanning its entire 200 year history is only 14.5 trillion. So in other words, the entire US debt for the entire existence of the, of the country was given away. The budget that is being so heavily debated in Congress and in the Senate is only $3.5 trillion. Take all the outrage and debate over the $1.5 trillion de deficit into consideration and swallow this red pill. There was no debate about whether $16 trillion would be given to failing banks and corporations around the world. None. It's a completely autonomous organization that does what it wants, when it wants, in our name, with our money. In 2008, the top bailout bill was passed and loans of $800 billion were given to failing banks and companies. That was a blatant lie concerning the fact that Goldman Sachs alone received $814 billion. As it turns out, the Federal Reserve donated $2.5 trillion to Citigroup, while Morgan Stanley received $2.04 trillion. This is a clear case of socialism for the rich and the rugged, and you're on your own individualism for everyone else. That's by Bernie Sanders, okay? When you have conservative Republican souls like Jim DeMint of South Carolina, Ron Paul of Texas, as well as self-identified Democratic Socialists like Bernie Sanders and, and, and uh, Ralph Nader, all fighting against the Federal Reserve, you know that it is no longer an issue of right versus left. It's an issue of right versus wrong. When you have every single member of the Republican Party in Congress and a progressive congressman like Dennis Kucinich, who is sponsoring a bill to audit the Federal Reserve, you realize that the Federal Reserve is an entity unto itself which has no oversight and no accountability. The banks and the governments, entire governments in Europe, go bankrupt. Collapse under the weight 
a debt piled upon debt, piled upon debt, piled upon debt. And when that happens, there is going to be an international bailout of the entire continent. I'm talking about the banks that produced and own the debt, okay, and the governments that serve them, okay? That's who's going to be bailed out. And how are they going to do it? Well, there's this thing called the International Monetary Fund. Okay? They're going to spearhead and lead the bailout. The way it's going to work is all the countries of the world are going to pitch in to the IMF, and the IMF is going to buy bonds from Europe. They have these European Stability Financial Stabilization Bond Fund, or something like that. Okay? And they're going to bail out the banks to the tune of trillions and trillions of dollars. That means our Federal Reserve is going to give European banks billions and billions and billions of dollars. Now publicly, just like they, just like we saw, the top they said it was 800 billion, but the real price tag was, was, was 16 trillion. They're going to do the same thing. They're going to say, oh, we're going to authorize 500 billion dollars. The Treasury is going to do some kind of like swap Thing, you know, with with with, with the with the, with the I, IMF, and that's how they're going to come up with the money. Oh, we won't, we won't, we won't really raise taxes, or we won't really. It's just going to be. We'll, we'll figure it out. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. You know, behind the scenes, trillions of dollars are going to be pumped out. Okay, given to the IMF. The IMF buys the bonds from from from, from the Europeans to save the European banks and save the European governments and the bondholders. It's purposefully set up. They create the crisis to implode the economies and implode the banks in order to justify the, 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 the bailouts that, that, that they get from it and also to get more power. This is where I'm going with this. The Federal Reserve seized more power over the economy as a result with the so-called reform bill. They have more power after destroying the economy, they have even more power over it now than they did before the crisis. And they're going to do the same thing in Europe. With the international, the first ever international bailout of an entire continent, the bankers are going to engineer the creation, or at least move towards the creation of a world central bank, a world monetary authority, and in other words, they're going to elevate, they're going to elevate their power from just simply the national realm to the international realm. The exact same power that we're talking about over, over national governments will now be elevated to an international level. Is that really what we want? Worldwide fascism. Global fascism. Now think about it. We all have to report to them every year, like a financial statement. Here's what came in, here's what went out, here's the profit, here's the loss. Yep. You know, depreciation, amortization, all of it. We are little mini individual corporations, okay, on a balance sheet, okay, and we have to report just like a corporation does. We are personal corporate hoods to them. Yeah. The difference is we are tiny little individual one person corporations in the in the eyes in the eyes of the system. The trust. Up against Exxon. Eight, you know, uh, and the all, our product is our labor. Our product is our labor. You know, and we have to sell it to the big corporations. Yeah. We have to. That's our product. It's all we have. It's all they have left us. They have taken everything else from us and we're left with nothing else but our labor to sell to the big corporations in the big corporatist system. So yes, end personal corporhood, but let's also end, uh, uh, end corporate personhood, but let's also end personal corporatehood as well. Yeah. I look at it this way. I mean, <clears throat> corporations on their own just on their own, corporations are large-scale businesses. And that's kind of necessary. For a large economy, you've got to have large-scale businesses. Government, on its own, is a public institution. 
the marriage, the nexus between corporations and government. That's corporatist fascism. That's the problem. We have to get the corporations and the government completely separate and away from each other and end the nexus, end corporatism. This is a really important book, I think, for the Occupy movement globally and for the End the Fed and End Centralized Banking movement. Um, it's called Earth into Property, Col Colonization, Decolonization, and Capitalism by a professor of globalization studies up in uh, Lethbridge, Canada, uh, Anthony J. Hall. It's basically uh, the entire history of the uh, terror wars all the way back to 1492 and the uh, weaponized economy and currency way back before there was a Federal Reserve. So I just want to read just a couple paragraphs of it and then uh, give back the mic. Corporate privatization of the public sector occurred in 1913 when the U.S. Congress created the Federal Reserve System. With the Federal Reserve Banking Act, the structure of the U.S. economy was made to conform more thoroughly with the banking system that had evolved in Europe. Indeed, many of the 12 banking consortiums that owned and controlled the new agency were European entities that had profited greatly from the speculative bets on the rising value of lands, first in British North America, then in the United States. The Act transferred substantial powers from the government to the corporate sector by extending to the favored banking consortium strategic monopoly powers in the issuing and distribution of paper currency and in the selling of credit to finance and service the, national, the U.S. national debt. The reorganization of the U.S. economy around a single central financial institution was the culmination of a long struggle rising within the rising capitalist superpower about who should control the power to issue money and finance the national debt. The creation of the Federal Reserve System epitomized the success of monopoly forces against which Thomas Jefferson and Andrew Jackson had fought in their presidencies. They had vehement, vehemently opposed any form of special charter for a national bank because it would concentrate too much control over politics and the economy in too few hands. Moreover, a significant body of historical literature directly connects the major banking figures who gained enormous new privileges from the Federal Reserve System to the U.S. decision to enter the First World War and to the financing of the main protagonists behind the creation of the Soviet Union in 1917. Jacob Schiff of the Wall Street firm Kuhn, Loeb & Company was the largest financial backer of the revolutionary forces led by Leon Trotsky and Vladimir Ilyich Lenin. Kuhn Loeb was one of those favored entities that derived enormous competitive advantages from the federal charter granted to the banking consortium that acquired proprietary control of the Federal Reserve System. Although it is important to bring a skeptical eye to the abundant literature on the role of international bankers as actors who have played a disproportionately large role in the unfolding of these events, we cannot discount the pervasive influence emanating from the highest echelons of global finance. Wall Street's involvement in helping to finance the genesis of the regimes led by both Lenin and Hitler is indisputable. The waging of war in all its manifestations has always offered an excellent platform for profiteering. Wall Street power brokers in the 20th century proved adept at developing the skill of their European forerunners, teachers, and partners in hedging their bets by situating their investment on both sides of key conflicts. So this idea, right, that war is financed by the same people on both sides, and additionally, the other important point here is that we don't want to be, be uh, turned into a false revolution here. We don't want to, uh, remember, when the, when the uh, income tax, or the uh, personal corporate hood tax, uh, was uh, entered in 1913, slipped, slipped in as the Federal Reserve Act too, what it did, it said we're going to tax only the top 1% for 1%. That kind of rhetoric sounds very similar to what this movement is about. Yeah. It was a poison pill. It basically turned us all into corporations. So we need to be very careful, and the Occupy movement as a whole needs to think very critically about being used as a tool of the global gang bangsters who are trying to create a larger version of the Federal Reserve. Please remember that. We are going. We are going. To walk on the sidewalk. To walk on the sidewalk. Respect the traffic laws. Respect the traffic laws. And help the LAPD preserve our rights of free expression.